Hello and welcome to this Swift tutorial video. In this video I'm going to go over the basics of core data. And core data is sometimes talked about as a bit mysterious topic and something that's hard to figure out. But you will see in this video that it's actually pretty simple and you will get a hang of it pretty quickly if you just repeat it some time. So in this video I'm going to show exactly how to use core data and enable your user to store data in the app permanently. So that's what I'm going over in this video. So if that is something you want to know how to do, just keep watching and I will show you how. Okay, so we start by creating a new Xcode project and it's going to be a single view application. And here it is important that you tick this one off. So use core data. Then I'm just going to call this core data fun. Go to next and I'm just going to save it. Now, many people talk about core data as something very hard to grasp, but I'm going to show you that core data can actually be very easy if you just understand the fundamentals. And as you will see, it's really not that bad after all. So I'm just going to click here on this new file that you also will have if you ticked off core data. And this uh, this is something that you will be presented with and here you can create a new entity which is what we are going to do. So click there and I'm going to call mine users. And here I'm just going to give it two attributes, so username, let's see, username and password. So that's the two attributes that I'm going to give my entity. So the entity is users, the category is users and users uh, has two attributes, which is password and username. So here we are going to store our users, the name of our users and the passwords of our users. So just head over to view controller and I'm not going to use uh, the storyboard in this tutorial because I presume that if you're juggling with core data, you probably know how to lay out the storyboard. So we're not going to touch on that. We're just going to focus on core data and use the console output in order to see that we have had success. And from there, you can then process the data however you want to. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import core data and uh, everything is going to happen in the view did load method. So here I'm going to set up, uh, first I'm going to focus on storing core data. That's what I am going to, oops, storing, storing core data, but that's not the tutorial. So let's focus on how to do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let app delegate is equal to UI application dot shared um, dot delegate as app delegate because we need to reference app delegate in order to be able to work with core data because if we go into app delegate and we scroll down we will see here the methods for pers persistent container which is core data so this is something we want to access and here also save context which uh, helps us or enables us to save our stuff in our core data framework so let's over head over to the view controller again and we're going to create another uh, variable that's named context. And this is going to be an app delegate dot persistent container dot view context. So this basically enables us to work with core data. This is, you could say the key that lets us access the core data and lets us interact with the core data. And now we are going to create a new entity, so new user is equal to ns entity let's see entity description dot insert new object for entity name it's named users and into context which is this one right here so here we have the the, this is going to allow us now to also save it into the context. And now we are going to create the new user. So we're just going to say new user dot set value. And the value is going to be, first of all, the username. So Peter for key username. And it's important that you spell it exactly 
as you did over here else it's it's not going to give you a second chance it's just going to crash your app so make sure that that is correct I'm just going to copy paste it user dot set value for password and the password is going to be one two three Peter one two three so here we have created our new user, but we haven't stored the new user yet. So that is what we are going to do right now with writing it like this. So we're going to do this. And if it doesn't work, then we're going to catch it. Uh, process error. This is not something we're going to do right now, but of course, if you want to have a catch, uh, if something goes wrong, then here is the place you want to write that. So we're going to try to save it, context.save. And if it all works out, we're going to print saved. So this should now work. So let's try to run it. Let's see, I like my iPhone 6s. Any errors here? Uh, let's see, oh, of course, yep. Let's see, here, core data. And we have to make sure that we define it. And this is going to be a string and this is also going to be a string. So let's launch it and let's see what we've got. Okay, so here is our app, but of course that's not the important part. The important part is right down here and we're looking for saved right there, which means our new user has been saved. So let's create some more users so that we have something to display. I'm going to say Carl has the password that launch it again. So we're just going to repeat this um, four times so that I have for users. So let's see, let's save Carl. Carl is saved, let's save uh, Sophia, also random password, launch, and one last Jennifer, also going to get a password. So I have now saved my four users, and in order to show you that this is really saved, I'm going to delete all of the code that has anything to do with saving. So there we go. I'm just, I just deleted all of that, as crazy as I am. And now we're going to work on um, pulling that data out of the core data framework. So let's say, let request. So we have to create a request to be able to access it. It's like asking uh, the security guy to come through. We have to create a request, nsfetch. Uh, request and it's going to be an ns fetch request result and entity name you see entity name it's going to be users which is where it's going to search and I'm going to say request dot return object as false and what this simply means is that by default core data doesn't return you the full value. It just turns you, returns you uh, something that really can't work with. So in order to see it as a string, as the way you saved it, you have to say request.return objects as false equal to false. This is just so you can see it the way you also, um, as you will see it the same way as when you put it into your core data. So again, here we're going to Start with the do, and the catch, and here you're going to process error, and we're going to say let results is equal to try context dot fetch context dot fetch, and we're going to fetch. Let's see, request. So here we're going to try to put all of the results that we got from the fetch request into this variable right here called results. Then we are going to see if there are some objects in that, in that um, value. We're going to say if results.count is greater than zero, which means there is something in there for us that we can access, then we're going to say um, for result in results, which is going to pull out uh, each of the each of the objects in the results array. So we're pulling out one at a time. So result, and then if let username username 
is equal to result dot value for key and the key was as you remember username and then we're going to try to convert it to a string so that we can do something with it without having it as something random random stuff that we really can't do anything with uh, so here we will then have a username let's see what the error is uh, cast any okay so we are just going to solve that by saying as converted to an ns managed object just like that so here that should remove it yes so here we are going to have a username we can try to print it print username and then here we no nope, let's see not else here we are going to try to access the password also so we're going to say password password and password so let's try to run it and see what we've got so far so here is our output as you can see our user our password our user our password so this is great now we have uh, been able to access it and as you can see it returns this just the way it should and just to make everything a bit more clear what we're basically doing here is we are going into the core data and we are getting the content in the core data and we're putting it into this results variable and then we check if the count of that results variable is greater than zero which simply means that uh, there is something in there and the uh, operation has been successful all this do, does is allow us to reach into the core data and grab something out of it then as i said we put it in there we check if there's something in there then we loop through all the results by placing each result in this variable right there and extracting the username and the password and as you can see i'm not now going to try to store this and in an nice and sorted array so i'm just going to say var password r um, of type string is equal and i'm also going to have one for my username 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 r of type string is is equal bam 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 and now i'm going to append these into their respective arrays so i'm going to say username r dot append the element username and here i'm going to do the exact same thing with the username so pass word array dot append and i'm going to append the password and then when the operation is done i'm going to print both of the arrays just to show you that we have some information that you now can work with let's try to run it and see what we've got so this is a great way of storing variables probably the best way to store it is the best way to store local variables and as you can see it's really not that hard all you have to do is implement this code and do some things here so that you are left with two nice and sorted arrays with the users here peter carl sophia and jennifer and their respective passwords so that is how you work with core data hopefully everything got a bit clearer after watching this video make sure to click the subscribe button if you enjoyed this tutorial so that you stay tuned for more and then i will of course look forward to seeing you in the next video and again thank you for watching